Hello everyone, it's Shirley here, and if this is your first time visiting, welcome. I am a Canadian who lives in Seattle, and I work as a product manager in the tech industry. So a wise man once said, failure is feedback. So I thought I would share with you my personal failures today in some of my interviews, and hopefully you'll learn from those and guide you through your interview process. In particular, I want to talk about my failed interview experience at Microsoft for a data science program manager role. So at this point, I had already been working at eBay for over two years. And while I loved my team and my manager, I was looking for a little bit of change in pace. In particular, I thought changing a company would help me gain additional experience and increase my pay bump a little bit. Also, there was a little bit more churn at eBay during this time with senior leadership. So there were a lot of people coming and going and we weren't sure what the direction of the company would be in the next year, two or five years. All right, so I first started studying with this book, Cracking the PM Interview, and it has some really good resources in terms of what kind of product manager experience you can gain from all the big tech companies, including Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Facebook, etc. But what's also really helpful here is there are a set of questions for each of the different categories and sometimes with solutions so you can practice those questions. And the different categories include obviously the behavior questions, which you shouldn't be docked any points on because those are the easiest for you to practice, as well as some coding questions, some approximation, estimation, and product design. And it guides you through the process on how to solve it. It gives you step-by-step -step guidelines on how to work through each type of question. So there's a structure to your method and you can justify how you got to the solution. To give you a flavor of what kind of practice questions are in this book, there'll be questions like, how many tennis balls fit into a nine by 10 by 10 foot room or design an oven for a disabled person. And then you have to go through the guidelines to solve those questions. Since Microsoft and Amazon are some of the largest employers in this area, I focused a lot of my energy on applying for roles within these two companies. And I had practiced all of the approximation, estimation, behavior, product design questions, and only briefly touched upon coding before I got the call from Microsoft for the data science interview. So for the Microsoft data science interview, I was first given a phone screen from the hiring manager and we talked about what this role would entail a little bit. And I was given a case to take home and do before my actual day of the interview. So this case was about a photo app with some user data. There were a couple sections to the case and the first one was pretty straightforward. It asked for different distributions and looked at different quartiles of time spent in the app. And this, you just have to plug it into R and get the distribution data straight off the bat. The second part, I was asked to build a model to understand the different user segmentation. I used an exploratory random forest model for my prediction because I believe that the data was mixed and also the relationship between the variables are nonlinear. Additionally, to calculate my error rate, I used the out of bag method, which basically samples half of the data set randomly with replacement and use that as a training set. And then the other half that is not sampled, it is used for calculating how accurate it was. Lastly, I was asked to translate those learnings into insights for the apps team, as well as sharing my R code because they want to know how you got to that final answer and the process that you took to get there. And with anything like this, it's always important to comment your code so they can follow it. Now onto the actual day of the interview. The interview started at 9 a.m. and I had left enough time to get there about 10 minutes early. What I didn't realize was that there was going to be construction on site at the main campus and parking was impossible to find. So I ended up parking really far away in like a Honeywell parking lot and had to walk all the way to the office where I was getting interviewed at, resulting in me coming in at about five minutes late, which is obviously not a good start for any interview candidate. My first interview was with the principal data scientist, and he asked me more questions about the photo app. We went through the questions again, and I think it's more to make sure that I had a clear understanding of the data itself, and also that I did the work by myself. 
Next, I had my round with the engineering manager over Skype because he was overseas. And this is a round I failed pretty miserably. First, he asked me to reverse a linked list, which should be pretty straightforward because you just have to change the pointers. But my mind had blanked at that moment. And then secondly, I think he asked about a binary tree, but obviously I was too caught up on how I had blinked out the first part that I didn't even get to it. I had gone in thinking that it was a purely data science program manager role, and I had spent all of my time and energy studying stats problems and how to solve those. So I neglected actual coding questions and practicing linked lists and trees. So while the questions he asked were pretty basic, I didn't get them. And it was an hour of dread because I just came out of there knowing I've solved these before. I just don't remember right now because I haven't practiced any of this. And that I think was my greatest downfall in all of this process. So while I was blindsided, there's nothing I can do at this point. So I just had to continue on and hope for the best. So my third round was over lunch with the actual hiring manager himself. And we talked about kind of both ways of what I'm expecting and what he's expecting from me for this particular role. And I learned that for this particular position, I would be working on telemetry data to improve engineering efficiency. So it wasn't customer facing, it was more of a back end data analysis to see where are the inefficiencies that we can improve on. Finally, I had my last round with someone who is more senior on the leadership team. And she asked me more of a broader question, like how would I design a survey for a particular demographic? So I think they were trying to understand their workers' behavior and try to accommodate the different types of people like mothers, fathers, single people, couples, etc., that work in the current team. So at this point, I kind of realized that this role would entail a lot of data analysis by myself and it would have less interaction with people and definitely not customer facing, uh, which is probably not the best suited for my personality because I like to have that level of social interaction and I like to be able to work on something that I can see the result of. Ultimately, I did not get the offer, and I think it was primarily due to the coding round. But every failure is feedback, so from that point on, I knew I had to bring my coding on par with all the other questions I practiced, and that was really, really, really good learning experience for me. So I hope this helped you, and if you are looking for a product manager role or a data science role, this will give you a flavor of what to expect. Until next time, I'm wishing you best of luck. And if you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And I would love to hear your comments. Bye.